He was only 53 years old, and his passing today came as a complete surprise. New York Hospital announced that puppeteer Jim Henson had been admitted early Tuesday with what is described as galloping pneumonia, and early this morning at 1.30 Eastern Time, he died. Community-acquired pneumonia is too frequently dismissed as a curable, easily managed disease. But 26 years after Jim Henson's death, pneumonia remains a killer. Dr. Michael Niederman, pulmonologist and professor of clinical medicine at Weill Cornell Medical College in New York City, is widely known for his expertise in the management of community-acquired pneumonia. Community-acquired pneumonia is a very common illness but at the same time, it's the number one cause of death from infectious diseases in the United States. The patients who are affected cover a wide range of individuals, from previously healthy individuals to patients who already have serious underlying medical problems. So in that regard, community-acquired pneumonia is complicated because of the broad range of patients who are affected, the underlying diseases they can have, and then our management is complicated by the large number of potential organisms that could lead to community-acquired pneumonia. Jim Henson was affected with a pyogenic streptococcal pneumonia, which was so virulent that it overwhelmed even what was presumably a normal host defense system, and he presented to the hospital so far along in the course of his illness that it was difficult for any intervention to make a difference. It's very important to diagnose pneumonia as early in the disease as possible. We know that delays in diagnosis in a number of instances are associated with a poor outcome. In fact, studies several years ago demonstrated that delay in the initiation of antibiotic therapy, even by several hours, can add to mortality. The symptoms that suggest community-acquired pneumonia are multiple, and the nature of the symptoms that patients have are often a reflection of their underlying immune status. So a young and previously healthy individual usually has classic symptoms of pneumonia. And it's very obvious that that patient is ill and all of the signs of illness point to a respiratory source of infection and illness. On the other hand, with individuals who have immune suppression due to cancer chemotherapy or advanced age where some of the comorbidities or aging itself or some of their medications interfere with their immune responsiveness, they don't have to have the classic symptoms of pneumonia. And in fact, they may have more subtle symptoms. They may have failure to thrive. They're just not doing well. On any given day, the emergency department of an urban hospital sees several patients with suspected pneumonia. Dr. Rahul Sharma, physician-in-chief of emergency medicine at New York Presbyterian Hospital, explains key aspects of workup. The workup depends on what kind of patient we have. Uh, depends on their age um, and their complaints uh, as well as their vital signs. But overall, workup includes checking blood work, uh, getting an x-ray, and obviously a physical exam. With every single patient, you want to know if they've traveled, um, if they have any sick contacts, what were they doing for the last few days, have they ever had pneumonia before. The factors we use to decide to admit include, obviously, the patient's clinical situation, their vital signs, what their physical exam shows. Uh, what their blood work shows, and if they have any comorbidities which would put them at risk of failing treatment. I think it's very important to define the severity of community-acquired pneumonia. That dictates how aggressively you treat patients, how quickly you start antibiotics, and most importantly, it dictates the site of care. Do you send them home? Do you put them in the hospital? And if you put them in the hospital, do you put them in the intensive care unit or in a general medical ward? There are a number of scoring systems that have been developed to predict severity of pneumonia. And one particular scoring tool that I do like is the CURB-65 scoring system. And that's an acronym, C-U-R-B-65, where C stands for confusion. U is an elevated B-U-N. R is a respiratory rate greater than 30. B is a low blood pressure, and age of 65 is the last factor. And the more of those five factors a patient has, the more severe their pneumonia, the greater their risk of dying, and usually the greater their need for admission or admission to the ICU. 
There's a lot of interest in defining the optimal duration of therapy for community-acquired pneumonia. With therapy duration, a lot depends on the actual antibiotic chosen, once again, the status of the patient's immune responsiveness, young, previously healthy individuals with very uncomplicated disease and very common, easy-to-treat pathogens could be treated for as little as five days and get better. And then we try not to go more than 10 days, except in exceptional circumstances. And I think if we're going more than 10 days and the patient's not getting better, we really need to ask why. Because most antibiotics, particularly if you've chosen the right antibiotic, will eradicate the pathogen very rapidly. I think it's important to remember that pneumonia is still a very serious illness, and it's not a disease to be complacent about. Hi, my name is Kelvin, and I work on the team that creates the content that you've just seen, Medscape TV. If you like the content and want to see more, click on the button to the right, and it'll take you to the full series.